Hello and welcome to the Garage Series. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Amesh Munsakani. So Amesh, we have a great show in store. If you are using remote desktop infrastructure and want to use that with Office 365 Pro Plus, you can now start doing that with shared computer activation. That's right. And on September 1st, we announced shared computer activation for everybody. So of course, we're going to answer your top questions about things like what is it, how does it work, and much more. But before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia. True or false? If you install Office 365 Pro Plus using shared computer activation, you can change the activation type back to normal user-based, non-shared activation. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. So Mash, when we think about shared computer activation, it's really changing the way we activate Office, right? That's correct. So before we would have to use, if we were using something like remote desktop services or remote app or Citrix Zen app, we'd have to go into the Volume Licensing Service Center and download a special set of bits, effectively the MSI package with volume licensing and keys and all of that. And then we would use that sometimes as a separate package type against our Office 365 environment. What we can do here with shared computer activation is really turn the activation, instead of being machine-based, to a user-based thing. And what that means is, if we think about in the old in the old context, I have a computer. And that computer effectively has the key assigned to it. That means that any user, whether I've got user, user 1, user 2, user 3, is going to log in and use that same key for activation. Now with shared computer activation, it gets a little bit different because basically the activation itself isn't bound to the hardware. It's bound to the actual user account and only bound to that session. So each, each user session has its own demarcation. So the key when he signs in is going to be specific to user 1. User 2, when he signs into that machine, same thing. It's going to be specific to that user, and so forth. Now, if user 1 logs out, and another user wants to go and log into that machine, like you'd see in an RDS environment, then basically that key goes away. And let's say user 1 is now user 4. He's got to re-log in, re-authenticate. And the great thing is here, if I have an architecture like, say, pooled virtual desktops, that key will move from user, the user profile within that virtual environment. So that, that user doesn't have to keep signing in. It will stay cached for that user. It's so really cool stuff in terms of being able to open up how we can use shared computer activation and really free up this, this remote app and RDS scenario. So now that we know what it is, let's take a look at some of our top questions that we're hearing about this feature. So how do I use shared computer activation, and what do I need to download or enable it in Office 365? Well, Jeremy, it's really simple. All you have to use is your Office deployment tool to be able to modify your configuration file and add two simple lines, and I'll show you here. You just add the property name, shared computer uh, license, to add it to a value one, and then your display level to none and accept EULA to true. This enables the actual shared computer activation. Right, and if this is the first time that you're seeing this, then you can go back and check out some of the older shows that we've done, even with Curtis Saw, and to show how to use the Office deployment tool to get Office downloaded and set up. So now once we set this key, it's basically going to say this is ready for shared computer activation, right? That's correct. OK, so that's how we set up, very easy. The next question that I get a lot, because we've had different licensing terms in the past with volume and, and non, and if I bought it from office365.com, it was a little bit different. If I'm a small business, and maybe I bought Office 365 directly from office.com, can I use shared computer activation now without going to volume licensing and using the volume licensing service center? That's correct, you can. So now you can use shared act uh, computer activation on any Office 365 Pro Plus products. And this is an important point because in, even in some markets, it was impossible really to buy Office in that way, especially if you're a smaller or medium-sized company, and use things like RDS or Citrix Zen app to deliver Office. But now it's basically available to anybody with Office 365 Pro Plus. That's correct. So the third question that we get a lot is, can I use Office 365 Pro Plus with shared computer activation in my standard image? So I've got a, in a standard image maybe a WIM file that's already got pre-installed or a, a task sequence that installs Office. Can I do that and just use shared computer activation for everyone and, and really carpet it across my org? Definitely. You can have shared computer activation put on your standard image, and then when you're deploying all the images, you can go ahead and turn it off for those that do not need it. And I think the important aspect here is really the experience if somebody's licensed or unlicensed. So why don't you walk through what that process looks like. If I'm a licensed user, then I'll be able to use it. If I'm not a licensed user, then what does that look like? So here we have uh, a desktop which I've logged into. I'm going to go ahead and open Word. And what it's going to do now, it's going to go ahead and ask me to authenticate against our um, online licensing services. So I get this prompt. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and put my credentials in.
And what it's doing here, it's authenticating me. And it's actually not even using my five licenses that I have available for a Mac or PC. And I'll show you what that looks like. So once I go ahead into the backstage and I go into accounts, you're going to go ahead and see that there's no actual product information, but I do have my username that it just authenticated uh, me, me to. So if we go into manage licenses right now, you wouldn't be able to see that there's a, one of your five licenses consumed with this because you just use shared computer activation only. That's correct. Now on the, on the flip side, what's the experience now if I log in as a user that doesn't have Office 365 Pro Plus provisioned in Office 365? That's a great question. So now if I've gone ahead into my second account, I'm here as Alex, and I'm going to go ahead and try to open up a Word document. And as this Word document goes out, again, it's going to be prompting Alex for his credentials. If he does not have any uh, authority, any authorization to use Office 365 Pro Plus, he's going to go ahead and get the reduced functionality mode. Now what you see here is he still has the availability to print and actually view the document. Right, so he's got some basic functionality, reduced functionality mode means. So the great thing is if you've got, say, a, a factory floor where maybe some of the people are licensed for Office 365 Pro Plus, some are not, anybody could walk up to that computer, that terminal, start using Office for, for basic viewing but the people that have the rights provision in the tenant will be able to edit or create new documents. So another question that we get a lot, because there's a lot of people using these technologies, is will shared computer activation work with Citrix Zen app, Azure remote app, or similar remote desktop solutions? Definitely, that's the exact scenario that we built this for. So this is great, so that means that if I'm using uh, any type of remote desktop infrastructure right now, all of those technologies will work as long as I'm using a a Windows 7 or Server 2008 R2 and higher host, I can remote into that and use shared computer activation. So the last thing that I get, the question I get a lot is, can I just use shared computer activation really replace what I'm doing now with Office 365 Pro Plus? Well, actually, that's not the intention of shared computer activation. What, what's going to happen at that point is shared computer activation is going to constantly renew at a short period of time versus if you weren't using shared computer activation. Right, and if I don't have things like ADFS set up, then that user's going to get prompted more frequently, maybe every couple of days, to keep signing in. But I think another really important point here is if I do install, say, my standard image or my standard image process, what I can do is flip that shared computer activation to just the normal kind of hardware dedicated subscription activation that I'm used to with Office 365 Pro Plus. Why don't you show us how that works? All you have to do is go into your reg key and actually delete the shared computer license key itself. Once you delete that, shared computer activation is no longer activated on this device. Right, so you can do that. You can either delete the reg key with a script. You can even go in and use the setup.exe with our office deployment tool and run setup.exe and turn that property to have shared computer activation disabled. So basically, all these questions, I think we, we've talked about uh, you know, shared computer activation standard images, where we'd use it, does it work with Citrix? All these things have really great answers now, so it really opens it up to a lot of people. Before we wrap up today's show, though, let's have a look at trivia. True or false, if you install Office 365 Pro Plus using shared computer activation, you can change the activation type back to normal user-based, non-shared activation. So, of course, the answer was true. We just saw it in action. Yep, and it was only one reg key. So hopefully this answers all your questions about shared computer activation and you can find more information on the blog and you can even ask questions there as well. And it's available now, so if you have Office 365 Pro Plus, go out and try it. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter and check us out every Wednesday at the Garage Series. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.